Um, thank you so much for joining us. We know this word will significantly impact your life, so let's tune in. Growing through the word. This year, 2020, is a year of growth, and I believe that all of us this year are going to grow like we never have before. I believe, and actually I've even seen this in my life and many people around me, that this is going to be a year where you probably already have grown more in the month and a half that we've been in this year than you have all of last year. Is there anybody that's, that's feeling me on that one? Oh, I'm seeing hands all over the place. I feel like it, we've, we're only how many days into this year, and I cannot believe how much growth we've been seeing as a church, personally with God. This truly is a year of growth. And if you're, if you're saying, you know what, I'm not experiencing that growth, well, that's okay because you came on the right night. We're going to see some growth tonight, and I believe this can be a year of growth for every single person in this church, every single person that's here tonight. We're going to see some amazing, crazy growth through the Word of God. So. He started a message last week, and we learned that this Bible, this word here, this Bible sounds a lot like God's voice. If you've ever been someone or you heard someone say, man, I heard the voice of God, and maybe you felt like, well, how come I haven't heard the voice of God? Well, it's easy. You just open it up and you read it, and that's God's voice. This word right here is the voice of God, is God speaking to us. So every time we open scripture, every time we come to church, every time someone is preaching the word of God through the Holy Spirit, you're hearing the voice of God speaking to you. And the Bible says, God says it's about his word. My word will not return to me void, which means that every time the word of God is spoken, if you want it, you could have it. And if you want to see fruit, you could plant it. And you could definitely see God move in your life every single time the word of God moves and ministers. Another thing we learned last week is that the word of God is 100% reliable. Someone say 100%. That means that you can trust the word of God with your entire life. There's not a lot of things in the world that you can entrust your entire life to except for the word of God. The word is perfect. It's complete. It doesn't need to be added anything. It doesn't need anything to be taken out of it. The word is 100% reliable. And if you want to grow, you can trust that the word of God will help you to grow. How many believe that? Come on, how many believe that tonight? And here's the, other, here's the other important factor. It's important to believe that. It's important to believe that the word is 100% reliable because either you believe you can trust it or you don't trust it. Either you put your faith in the word or you push it to the side and rely on some of your own street smarts. It's one or the other, but the word of God, since I've known it, since I've been alive, and it hasn't been a long time, well maybe it has been a long time, I'm getting a little older now, but since I've been alive, I've known this word to be 100% reliable, to always prove true, to always hold up against any fallacy, against any false word, against any deception the enemy tries to put in my mind when the devil tries to say you're not good enough. The Bible reminds me that I'm the head and not the tail. Anytime the enemy tries to tell me I don't have enough, God reminds me that I am your provider, that I have everything that you need. Every single time I think that I'm weak, the Bible Bible reminds me that in my weakness he is made strong and his will is made perfect in my life. Come on, is there anybody that believes that the word of God has enough power to change and make a difference in your life the way it did mine? The word of God has that power. And the Word of God is still alive today. The Word of God is not outdated. The Word of God is not dead. The Word of God is not just some dusty book that should look like a cute decoration on your coffee table. This Word right here will bring change in your life if you want it to. Is there anybody that wants some change tonight? Is there anybody that wants some growth tonight? The Word will do that. Psalms 19.7 says, The instruction of the Lord is perfect. Psalms 19, seven. The instruction of the Lord is what? It's perfect. Renewing renewing one's life. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy, making the inexperienced wise. 
I love how beautiful this scripture lays out something I haven't even realized before. That if I want a perfect, renewed life, if I want things to change within me, then I need to go to the word of God. There's a lot of self-help books out there. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of Zumba classes you can go to. There, is, there, are, there are 101 different diet plans, and every dietitian, I don't even know if that's a word, sorry if I just offended someone, but every, every, per, every nutritionist out there has the secret. You know, I, I'm, and I know that there's a lot of nutritionists that, that really know what they're doing, um, but every nutritionist has the secret X factor that no one else knows about. There's a lot of self-help books. There's a lot of motivational speakers. There's a lot of leadership seminars you can go to. There's a lot of cool documentaries you can watch to make you smarter, but there's nothing, listen to me, there is nothing that's going to help you to grow in all areas of your life like the Word of God. Is is there anybody that believes that tonight? So tonight we're going to talk about that. But we have to choose that we want to grow this year. Before I can even continue on in this message, we have to make the decision tonight that I want to grow. And I want to say good job to everyone that showed up. Good job to everyone that's tuning in right now. Because what you're saying is I'm going to make an effort somehow to grow this year. I know it's, we're in the second month and you guys are still here pushing strong, making, thing, making a difference in your life and making a difference in your family's life by putting God first. But we have to make that decision every single day to want to desire growth in our life and how we're going to grow is through the word of God. That's the most important thing that we can grow in this year. When you grow in the word, you grow in your weapons, you grow in your faith, you grow in all kinds of areas. So and we're going to answer this question tonight. How does the word help us to grow? How does this word help me? I understand that Every time a preacher comes up here, they, all they can say is, read the Bible, read this more. Well, there's a reason, because the Bible will help us to grow in so many different ways. Tonight, we're only going to talk about maybe two or three of them. But how does this word help me to grow? What does this word do that changes me? You know, I think that it's actually really important that we understand that this word is, is, a, is the voice of God that God gave us today. And it is the living word of God. This is, if we want to know God more, we get to know the Bible more. That's how we know God more. So how do we grow by knowing the word more? Well, there's three ways we can say right now. The word refines us. We're refined. How does it help us grow? We're, re we're blessed. How else? It makes us wiser. Those are the three ways we're going to talk about tonight of how the word helps us to grow. Let's talk about number one, how it refines us. Someone say, refine me. Now, what does refining mean? Well, it was an old practice to refine gold. What, what some of the craftsmen or the, uh, the blacksmiths or what they would do is they would take gold through some of the hottest fires the hottest fires to the point where it would melt the gold and it would cause these impurities to come out of the gold. Gold wasn't always perfect coming out of the ground. It has different particles, has dirt in it, it has other stuff that's not gold. But if you want the purest form of gold, you got to refine it. You have to do what? You have to refine it, which means you have to put it through some of the hottest temperatures that you could put it through. Now, if we were, if we could be in the gold's mind. I'm sure the gold, it wouldn't feel good. It would be really hot. And how many know you guys been through situations where it feels like you're being refined sometimes and it doesn't feel good and it gets a little hot. The temperature starts kicking in a little bit and it starts challenging you as a person. Well, that's what the word does for us. See, nothing in the world can help us grow quite like the word of God. I want you to look at John 6, 63. It says this, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Isn't that interesting? That if we want life, if we want things to grow, if we want to be a person of growth, and we're saying, I want to be a different person today than I was yesterday or last year, well, it's the spirit that does that, and the flesh is no help at all. How funny is that? Because we, we will pay money. We will pay money. People will pay thousands of, thousands of dollars to go to a leadership seminar. People will pay money 
to, to buy, like I said, the best diet plan out there. People will pay, invest money in books, and I'm not saying that stuff is bad, that's great and all, but nothing, the flesh is no help at all when it comes to truly prospering and growing the way God wants us to prosper and grow. Because the truth is, you can have, you can have the best fashion, the best health, the best finances, the best, all of these different things, but it doesn't really quite help the way the word, what, what the word would help your life. The flesh really isn't no help at all because there's still gonna be that void within you that says, why am I the same person in a different costume? Why am I the same person in a different mask? Why am I the same person with the same depression or the same anger or the same fears? Why am I still dealing with the same old turmoil within me? I'm gonna let you know why, because the flesh really is no help at all. But we've been depending on the flesh to be our world changer. We've been worshiping the flesh and the worldly things to help us change. We're going to all the great seminars, we're going to the, the little events, we're dressing differently, we're hanging out with different people, we're getting promoted at jobs, which is all fine and dandy, but it's not really helping us. Why? Because it's the spirit that gives you life, it's the word of God that causes us to change, not necessarily the flesh. So it says, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. The flesh isn't really helping me, but the words, someone say the words, the words I've spoken to you, that God is speaking to you, is spirit and life. And there's nothing like, quite like it. See, if you feel dead inside, if there's, a, if there's a, a, an area of your life that feels dead, and what does it mean to be dead? Anyone have a, have a, had a, ever seen like a dead tree? No one, just me? Okay, yeah. <laughs> should, should I raise my hand? Yeah, I've seen. <laughs> okay, I have a dead tree like, um, I've seen a dead tree. Dead trees don't produce fruit. And then I have, a, I have another tree that just does, never wants to die for some reason. Like I've chopped it up a thousand times and it keeps wanting to grow back. That's a whole nother sermon and a whole nother story for a whole nother day. But if you've ever seen a tree that's dead, it doesn't matter how much you're gonna water that thing, that thing is dead. It's not gonna produce life the way you want it to produce life. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, fertilizer you add to that tree. It doesn't matter that the sun is beaming on that tree all day. If that thing is dead, that thing is dead. Say bye-bye, that thing is gone. It's not gonna produce any fruit in our lives. And I think we kind of deal with that sometimes. I heard someone actually today say that. They said, what's the definition of insanity? And we said, what? They said, it's doing the same thing, expecting different results. And you know, I think sometimes we're doing the same thing we're trying to water our dead sinful lifestyle we're trying to water our lives with the same old habits and practices we're trying to water our lifestyle with the same old things going back to the same old things we spend our days binge watching Netflix we spend our days scrolling through a thousand yards worth of Instagram if we could see how much scrolling we've done it'd be from here all the way to Timbuktu I don't know how much scrolling we've done on Instagram but we spend our time doing these things and we wonder why our fruit is not growing we wonder why there's no life inside of us we wonder why we're zombie faced every day we wonder why we're not excited about waking up we wonder why there's no joy in us anymore there's no fight within us anymore we're giving up every time the enemy tempts us here's why because we're trying to water a dead tree don't water the flesh the flesh is not gonna help you anymore stop trying to invest in the flesh as much as you invest in the word it's time for us to start investing in the spirit in life by pouring the word of God inside of us the flesh is no help at all it's the word of God that brings spirit in life come on how many agree with that tonight this is what the word flesh means in in the Greek or this this word is sarks sarks yeah that's really what it means and this is what it means the human or earthly nature of man apart from godly influence therefore opposed to God. I'm gonna read that again. Flesh is this, the human or the earthly nature of man, that's us, I'm gonna say that's me, that's my flesh, that's, uh, that's our human nature, that is apart from godly influence, therefore opposed to God. See, our default nature is the flesh, therefore our default nature is opposed to God. We're de by default, we're opposed to growth. By default, we are opposed to his wisdom. By default, we're opposed to being refined. 
Is there anyone that's following me right now? By default, we hate change. By default, we, being, we hate being told what to do. Well, don't talk to me like that. Come on, I'm gonna know what I'm talking about. By default, we want someone to be standing right here behind this pulpit and say, you're amazing. Your life is perfect. Don't change anything. Good job. And you know what? There are great things that are happening right now, things that we can praise God and celebrate life for. But the word, the word doesn't always feel good. The word doesn't always feel like a cozy blanket on a little winter night mm, with coffee. Or how cocoa if you don't drink coffee. The word doesn't always feel that way. And someone in here is probably like, man, that is so true. Because every time I sit in this chair and every time I hear Pastor Marco preach, I feel like someone just ratted my whole life out and are telling on me because that's exactly what I needed to hear. I didn't feel like hearing it. It didn't feel good to me, but it challenged me. See, our flesh will always oppose that growth. Our flesh will always push against the, the things the word wants to do in your life. The word will challenge you to grow. The word will say, commit to God. The word will say, get out of the get out of your room go get ready and go to church the word of god will say it's time to grow it's time to let that go it's time to seek me it's time to pray it's time to it's time it's time to reconcile it's time to forgive come on it's time to it's time to break the bondages come on it's time to let go the word of god will say those things but the flesh is no help at all the flesh is a human nature that has no godly influence at all that will always oppose god so if you've ever felt like not getting in the word that's your flesh talking to you that's the enemy trying to knock on your door and say look you don't need that right now just do the same old things you've been doing go to work wake up go to work come back home eat go to sleep wake up go to work come back home go to sleep don't add any words to your life that's what the enemy keeps saying why because as soon someone say as soon as soon as the word hits your life, now you're starting to water your spirit. And your spirit is where you bear fruit. Your spirit is where you have joy. Your spirit man is where you have authority over the tactics of the enemy. Your spirit man is how you conquer temptation and you conquer your flesh and you conquer demons and you cast out things that don't belong within you anymore. It's as soon as you hit the word to that soil that God starts to show up in your life and people start to see you as somebody that's different and you start to light up dark places and you start to conquer the depression and the fear and the anxiety like never before it's through the word of God that that happens not the flesh see our flesh always opposes our spirit by default our flesh desires the exact opposite of the goodness of God but as soon as we start getting in this word, our spirit man comes to life and we start to see life. We start to see breakthrough. We start to see joy in his life spring up from within us. See, the wisdom that's found in scripture will challenge everything in you that's not of God. The wisdom and the, the life, scripture, the word of God will challenge everything that within you that's not of God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a breaking news alert. Everyone here, right now, in this room, including myself, including everybody watching, has something within them that's not of God. Now, I'm not, I'm not declaring, what are you saying, I got a demon? Now, hold on, hang on just a second. What I'm saying is everyone in this room has something called the flesh. And until we go to heaven, we have this fleshly thing. And every morning we wake up, we have to submit that thing, put it under submission, under our feet, under the word of God. But the truth is this, that the word of God will always, someone say will always. The word of God will always challenge something within you because there's something, a part of you, it's called the flesh, that opposes the word and the will of God. So every time we read this word, there's going to be a lot of times we read it and we're going to have this decision to make. Do I want to apply this or do I not? Do I want to obey this or do I not? Because all it is is a choice. It's just a decision that we have to make. Will this be applied in my life 
will this bear fruit in my life or will it not? There's one or the other. There's no middle ground. There's no sidestepping one of them. There's no being on the fence. There's no gray area. Will I apply this word in my life today or will I not? The word will always challenge us. Something within us that's not of God. Look at Ecclesiastes 12, 11. It says the words of the wise are like cattle prods, painful but helpful. Their collected sayings are like a nail studded stick with which a shepherd drives the sheep. The words of the wise, well, these words are very wise. And these words drive us sometimes, and it's painful, but it's helpful. How many can say that just being, hearing the word of God at some, any point in your life, there was a painful time, but it helped you? How many can say, how many can agree with me when you say, there was a time I did not want to respond to that word. I did not want to receive it. I did not want to say yes to that call, but I said yes anyway, as much as it hurt, and it helped you in the end. See, the word of God tells us things and it challenges us, and sometimes we got issues. We have an issue of, so maybe you have an issue of anger. Well, the word of God will challenge that. Look at Psalms 37, eight. It says, stop being angry. Well, how do you scream at someone to stop being angry that's angry? Well, the word does that. It says, stop being angry. It says, turn from your rage. Do not let loose your temper. It only leads to harm. You know, as painful as that feels, because I, I grew up an angry kid. Ask any one of my family members. I was an angry kid to the point where it was like funny. Like it was just like, why is that kid red as a tomato and just panting in the corner right there and crying at the same time? That was me, I was an angry kid, I was angry at everyone, and I would just be mad all the time. But the word of God had to challenge that within me. And now, I mean, I'm not trying to boast or nothing, but through the word of God, I don't struggle with anger the way I did when I was younger. I'm totally set free from that. You're gonna have to try really hard to get me angry. I'm gonna just be like, God bless you, brother. Okay, oh, that's okay, you keep my car, no worries. I'll have a, I'll get that fixed later. Is your key okay though? Okay, awesome, bless you. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not, I'm not, it's, not, it's not that bad. <laughs> See, if you're dealing with something, let's say you're dealing with fear. The word of God challenges that too. Look at Joshua 1.9. <clears throat> it says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Maybe somebody in here has a really, really, really hard time breaking through fear. Maybe God has called you, called you up out of something. Maybe he's called you to do something great. Maybe he's given you a great vision or a great dream. And the moment you think about that, the first thought you think of is all your inadequacies and how you're not qualified. Well, the word of God directly comes against that idea in your flesh and it says, no, be strong and be courageous. You can trust my word. It's reliable. It's 100% reliable. You can depend on this, that everything I say to happen will happen. Everything I set for to do it will come to pass trust me don't be afraid don't have fear maybe you have an issue with faith maybe within you there's an issue your flesh is causing you not to be full of faith well the word also challenges that look at Romans 10 17 it says so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ maybe today you're saying I don't have faith for big things I don't believe God I don't trust God I don't have any idea what to do or where to go. Well, the word of God says, the word of God will bring, bring, will build our faith, will give us more faith than we need. Everything that we need to produce, all he's called us to produce. Here's another thing I wanna mention. <clears throat> Scripture is not meant to be adapted to fit your lifestyle. I think I've said this before, but I wanna address the issue again. Scripture is not meant to be bent, molded, shaped, twisted, like, like the bop it game. Bop it, twist it, bend it, er, twist it, bop it, boop. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> scripture is not meant to, that is not the design of Scripture. God did not call this scripture and deliver it to us, hand deliver it to us, but, but through Christ himself, and then, and then all only for us to adapt that scripture to fit our cozy little lifestyles. 
The scripture is designed for us to shape our lifestyle, to match and to exemplify and to mirror the word of God in us. That's why it's challenging. That's why it's a little painful. That's why sometimes when you're sitting in your seat, it's like, ouch, when pastor's up there preaching and he says something and I'm like, amen. I'm like, dang, that was for me though. <laughs> you tell him, pastor. Dang, I don't, did you tell him about what I was going through? Hey, you, you preach it, you, you guys better be listening. And then I'm going home like, yikes, that was for me. Anyone ever felt that before? See, that's what the Word of God is meant to do. Because if the Word of God never challenged our lifestyle, how sad, how low, how empty we would be if we didn't have the Word of God to bring life out of dry bones, to bring fruit out of a dead place, to make beauty out of ashes, to see a lost soul get saved. Without the word of God, we don't have that. But with the word of God, we can be raised to life. We can be full of joy again. We can have authority over the things of the enemy. We can raise up. We can fight the tactics. We can be all that God has called us to be through the word of God. I think I'm only going to get here and then we're going to wrap this up. Scripture refines us, and it also blesses us. Look at Psalms 1, verse 1 through 3. We're blessed through the word, guys. Verse 1 says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join with mockers. Here's a little side tip. If you want, if, if you wake up one day and you're like, you know what, I just want to lose all my joy today. I just want to lose it all. Here's a tip. Here's a tip. Follow the advice of the wicked, stand around with a bunch of sinners, and join in with the mockers. If you're saying, look, I just want to lose all my joy, then here's what you do. You stop coming to church, you go around when people would just give you the worst Facebook advice you could ever get, okay? I'm talking like Facebook meme, like one of those pictures that have been snapshotted and, and reposted a thousand times so it's all super pixelated. You know those that have the advice on there like, you know, like, um, I don't know, I can't even think of one right now. But you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Those right there. If you want to lose all your joy, abandon the word and go straight to that thing. And I guarantee all your joy will be sucked right out of you. And you're going to feel low, you're going to feel angry, you're going to feel depressed, and that's what's going to happen. But if you want to be full of joy, then avoid, avoid opening your ears to advice of the wicked. Avoid opening your heart and saying, hey, what's up, person that I know is not going to give me godly counsel? Could you tell me how to deal with this situation, please? Avoid that at all costs. And I guarantee you're going to start to see more joy, more fulfillment, and more peace in your life. Look at verse 2. It says, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each, each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Somebody who loves the word is blessed all the time. Anyone ever heard the saying, I'm too blessed to be stressed? Well, that's true sometimes, but those, that's true for the people that are planted along the riverbank. That's true for the people that are saying, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm, uh, when others get stressed about the economy, maybe they get stressed about a virus that's going around right now. Maybe they get stressed about some, their bank account. Maybe they get stressed about a family issue. The other people get, may get stressed about that, but those who delight, those who meditate, those who are planted in the word, those who welcome in this in their spirit, those who go back to the word when they're flesh is telling them not, not to do it. Those who go back to this, those who come to church on a Wednesday night and tune in online, those who expose themselves to the word of God, they're going to be full of joy. They're going to bear fruit every season. They are not going to wither. They are not going to be broken. They are not going to fall down and break. They are going to stand on solid ground. They are going to make it through the fight. They are going to make it through every single battle. They are going to come out on top. They are going to bear fruit and have life. Those who who enjoy, those who delight, those who meditate on the word of God. What does it mean to delight? It's a longing. It's pleasure. 
I long for this. Although I don't care what my flesh says, I'm not who my flesh says I am. I am who God says I am. Therefore, I long for this word. And sometimes you just need to tell yourself that one day. Maybe you need to wake up one day as much as you don't want to wake up early to read your Bible. Maybe you just need to wake up early one day and say, I can't wait to get in the word. Even though your flesh is saying, man, go back to bed. You're saying, no, I can't wait to get in the word. I am longing. I have a desire for this. I am hungry for it. I cannot wait to see what God has to say to me today because that's where my joy comes from. That's where I bear fruit. That's where I see new life. It's through this book right here. It's the word of God. Come on, how many love the word of God? How many desire the word of God? How many have a longing for the word of God? How many are passionate in the word of God? How many take pleasure in the word of God? It's the word of God that bears fruit in our lives. Come on, give God some praise for the word of God tonight. It says to delight, and then it says to meditate. What does that word meditate mean? It's haga in Hebrew, and, and that means to speak or to utterly, uh, it's to utter repeatedly or to imagine. You know that word meditate is not just about what goes on in your mind, but the word meditate has a lot of actually speaking out, repeatedly speaking out. And I'm not saying you need to walk every day and say, the drill of my strength, the drill of my strength, the drill of my strength, the drill of my strength. Hey, what's up, Bob? Hey, the drill of my strength, the drill of my strength. That's not what I'm saying exactly, but, but there is a practice that, that we need to start carrying with us. And that's at, instead of just reading, it's the, act, the action of actually speaking the word of God out. There's times in our lives where we're too silent. The enemy just wants you to be silent and not have the word of God in your mouth. There's times in your life where things are being spoken to you and you have absolutely no resistance against it. When God is saying, I've given you the word as my weapon and my weapon is stronger, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And if when it's spoken against the things of the enemy, you can see some damage happen in the enemy's kingdom and you can see some, some great things happen in your life. But we gotta practice sometimes speaking the word of God meditating on it, leaving no room for the enemy's tactics. Last scripture here, Luke eleven twenty eight. 28. Jesus replied, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. But even more blessed are all who, who hear the word of God and, and, it's not an if, it's not an or, it's not, but it's and, those who hear and put it into practice. That word practice in the Greek literally means to guard, to keep watch, or to protect oneself. See, just knowing this word, knowing it, hearing it tonight, maybe hearing it on Sunday is not enough. But putting this word into practice safeguards, safeguards your spirit, safeguards those blessings, safeguards the things that God has for you, safeguards his will for your life. Practicing the word of God does that. If you've ever felt like, why am I coming to church hearing this and my life isn't changing? Just take a quick second. And with all due respect, look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, am I actually practicing what I'm hearing? See, it's one thing to get a seed. It's another thing to plant the seed. Tonight, God is giving us all seed. When we leave here today, we plant it. Plant it within our hearts. And we see it bear fruit in our lives. We will not grow if we don't practice the word. But we will grow when we practice the word. We will grow. You will see fruit. You will see life. You will see change. The word is 100% dependable. You can trust it. You will see life through this word. And a question I asked earlier, I'm going to ask you again. Do you believe it? Do you believe it, church? Come on, if you believe it, give God a little praise tonight. If this message has been a blessing in your life and you would like to show support, please comment, like, share, and subscribe, or click the link below so that you can contribute to our ministry. Thank you and God bless.